welcome back another week of Tales from the Kitchen Garden and this week is a little bit different because I'm actually on holiday with my family this week as in time of work not physically going away on holiday um, so it's Tuesday afternoon when I'm recording this normally I'll do snippets from during the week but we've been recording lots of other things this week and actually just spending time together as a family and enjoying some time uh, Stephen's back to work next week so it's just me and the kids next week so there'll be a lot more footage from the garden next week but this week I wanted to just have a little catch up with you and show something that's a little bit worrying that I noticed um, this week and I thought it would be good to share with you guys but starting off with something we've got a visitor but starting off with something that's fantastic we have seeds so I've got some more seeds from the real seed company so once a month I do like to um, to get the seeds for the following month um, or top up on what I might be uh, missing out on. I just like buying seeds. So we've got lots of different lettuce, uh, winter lettuce. Uh, so this is a toothed crisp, crisp head lettuce that we're planting sowing today. We've got miner's lettuce or winter purslane, which I know is a, a good fallback. Winter marvel. So this is another winter lettuce. And then we've got some Paris early, early white overwintering onions. So really pleased about these guys. Now this is very specific recommendations on this. It says to sow them, sow outdoors August the 18th, not earlier, to give large bulbs for the following spring. So what I'm going to do is actually see how many is in here. I'm not too sure how many you get. It feels like quite a lot. And I'm going to give it a go. So it's a cold resistant onion suitable for sowing August the 18th and overwintering for early onions next year or sown in spring as normal. Bulbs and green stems used, not for storage. So I'll be growing these to use literally as we're picking them out of the ground. Um, and hopefully they'll be earlier than the other onions because I don't want to be harvesting onions earlier in the year that are going to be for storing for winter. I want those guys to be my last harvest onions, really. So I'm putting quite a bit of time and effort into learning about what onions I'm going to be getting next year, what varieties for fresh use, for different things that I want to do in cooking, but more specifically what we're all about, as, as you guys probably know by now, is seeing what we can harvest for storing for the winter. Now this year is just, it's been a crazy year hasn't it really, I don't think you're going to meet any gardener that says any year is normal, because there's always different things every year, but this year has just been all over the place with the cold, with the rain, with then with the, the, the temperatures have been so high, we, it didn't really get off to a good start and I don't feel like we've ever got going, so that'll lead me into showing you something that's happened here. But yeah, it's like I'm still waiting for it to get going. And then this morning, um, about seven o'clock, it still felt really dark. And I thought, my goodness me, it feels quite autumnal. So I feel like this year might be over before we even get going. So it's certainly not over yet. I don't mean that. But I don't know, I'm waiting for something and it, it just hasn't happened yet. But anyway, we, we're going we're gonna to work with what we've got. So that's the overwintering onion. And then this other is just a crisp head lettuce, which is called Jack Ice. So there's going to be lots of other seeds that I'm getting in um, and I'll just take you through some of those as, as and when I do them. But this week, what I wanted to share with you is some bad news in the outdoor tomato department. So let's go take a look. So the tomatoes that I grow um, outdoors, specifically outdoors, sometimes I'll grow them in the greenhouse and throw them outdoors. But the ones that I grow that are specifically for me to grow outdoors are called Outdoor Girl. Now I've had some great success with these over the years um, and last year was, was a good success with them but I let, left them to do their own thing and this year I thought right we're going to really stay on top of them we're going to get um, we're going to have the best crop yet. Now something else that I've never had is blight and I've just seen what I think are the first signs of early blight on these outdoor tomatoes. So I've got the three beds here that are my skinny beds as I call them because all my other beds are quite wide and these are ideal to get two tomatoes in through the full length, two tomatoes side by side, which is what I did in this bed. We actually planted through a ground membrane that we reuse. So I know people don't like that because it might contain plastic, etc. But but it's good for us because it keeps the weeds down, fully reusable. So I'm, I'm, I'm OK with that. But the point is that we've grown the tomatoes through holes that we burnt in the ground membrane it was working absolutely fine. The tomatoes are laden. So these plants have produced fantastically and now I think they've been hit with blight. So I've never had it before and I know that there are lots of other diseases that you can get that look like blight, which is why I'm questioning myself. I'm aware that I should be ripping these tomatoes out, 
burning the foliage or binning the foliage at the tip or whatever but I need to be convinced that it is but if I wait to be convinced it might spread to my other areas so this bed here is quite a distance if I just show you that was the shed that we were just in behind the shed is the greenhouse and the polytunnel which are the next closest tomatoes there's a few in this um, kitchen garden bed that we've got there but yeah so the, they're the closest and I don't want to risk it traveling so I believe it can it once it takes hold it's just prolific so I think if this is blight and and I'll show you in a sec so you guys tell me what you know but if this is blight we shouldn't be growing in here next year um, tomatoes or potatoes so note to self for next year's plans let me show you what's going on with them I'll flip the camera around so can you see this browning on the stem now that's one now that's one plant that it's took hold of but if you look where's the other ones but if you look in here can you see it's happening here too i'm pretty convinced there's a plant bear with me there's a plant there that's showing as well but the thing is the fruit isn't but none of the fruit showing any signs so this is this is what i'm confused about because i thought that it showed in the fruit first but but yeah, I mean, this, that's looking like blight to me, isn't it? Do you think? It's not on every plant yet, but my understanding is if it is blight, it'll ravage them very soon. But for the ones that are worse, like this guy in here. Oops, that's just snapped. I think that'll go pretty quick. So, so what do you think? Let me know because this is Tuesday afternoon and this will be going out hopefully um, as soon as I've got it edited, which won't take me long. Then I'm happy to do this tomorrow morning and get these out tomorrow morning if we need to. So, you know, 12, 24 hours. Yeah, it might make a difference, but if I've lost them, I've lost them anyway. So I'm thinking probably need to harvest the green tomatoes, put them aside to make, you know, the usual green tomato chutney. And there's lots of other recipes that I've seen for green tomatoes. Um, eat the red ones that look unaffected and then burn the foliage. I don't know, what do you think? Does it look like blight to you? There's, it's not looking like it's affected the fruits yet and is it just a case of, well, it's about to and I just, I found it early. But it's such a shame because there's 30 odd plants in this bed that could be affected. Um, and I was really hoping, really banking on these guys getting a good, a good harvest this year. But green tomato chutney, here we come maybe. Is that what's happening? We'll wait and see. So let me know what you think and what I want to do, I'm going to wash my hands because I think you can transfer it like that. I haven't touched it with my clothes, but what I want to do is go down to the bottom plot and just have a, I'm just going to visually, I'm not going to touch the plants just in case I don't want to pass anything on. I'm just going to visually have a look at the ones at the bottom plot and see how they're doing because I don't want it passing on. Such a worry. What a strange year. The other thing is, I don't know if I mentioned, but I've, I've topped up from my green grocer because I haven't got as many tomatoes as I intended to get this year. So it doesn't sound like anyone has. So I got in touch with the green grocer and said, um, can he supply me with, you know, a few kilos of tomatoes? And they did, and that was fantastic. I've made preserves from them and they're on the pantry uh, shelves. But I've got back in touch with them and said, look, it looks like I've got blight. Um, can I get some more of you if I need them? And he said, well, there's a supply shortage. So he has suddenly not been able to get hold of them either. Um, he said, so the price for what they do get hold of is going through the roof because their suppliers have let them down. I mean, what's going on? <laughs> is it just the same for everyone? Maybe. Right, let's go down to the other plot. Have a look, see how they're getting on. Fingers crossed they haven't got the dreaded B. <laughs> jungle of outdoor tomatoes we've got here now just visually looking at those guys there might be a complete mess but it doesn't look like they've got anything oh these potatoes are coming through 
Now these are dry because they're in the bags. I mean, the purpose of these here was really more about weed suppressant, putting a tomato, the tomatoes in was, was a bonus. So they just need watering. I mean, these leaves are fine. That's usual discard. And this nettle variety of tomato, <laughs> there's actually some ready on the ground that I can see. You might not be able to see on the camera. These are looking unaffected too. So I'm hoping that these guys are going to produce and not be affected because these are my potatoes at the back here. But if we can just get through the next couple of weeks, I mean, where are we? It's what, 17th of August today? And these are still flowering. If we can get through the next couple of weeks, then I shall just chop the foliage off the tops of these, leave them in a week or two, and then we'll be ready to harvest them. The reason that we'll leave them in um, with the the tops chopped off is just so that they can cure a bit under the ground but if we can escape it for another couple of weeks down here I'll be extremely happy who knew gardening would be so stressful and worrying I guess when you're trying to do what we're trying to do and actually have it as our provision of food rather than a hobby yeah I guess you put a lot into it don't you so okay um this is the other thing that I did here. Did I show you that when we harvested some of the items from in here, we, we just put ground membrane all the way along? Now that really helps us. Again, I know some people have said to me they don't like it and it's bad for the environment, etc. But we reuse it and uh, I'm, I'm all right with that. So there's a lot to do in here before I can harvest these potatoes that I mentioned. There's lots of weeds growing in between them and I want to make harvesting them as easy as possible. So my plan is um now i'm going to go grab some of those really thick gloves so that i can actually get in and just whip some of the whip some of the weeds out that we've got going on in here so that when we're harvesting the potatoes we can just concentrate on the tubers and also we can put the potatoes that we're harvesting on this ground membrane make it a lot easier to just come along at the end and see what we've got it's, it's not looking too bad some people might just see weeds I see food. Now we've got, I'm going to turn you around, look at this. This is a really good size courgette or three. You see that there? That one maybe is a little bit too long. They're never too big for me, to be honest. I love whatever we'll get. Now, don't do this. So this one here, I think I've killed because I think I've chopped off the central stem. So I don't know if that'll come back. So when I've been pruning it and taking the courgettes, I think I might have uh, over, over pruned it. Not to worry, it's all learning. And in here, oops, get rid of that bad leaf. What can you see there? We've got Swedes. Swedes are starting to form. So I'm really pleased because that patch there is all Swedes. And that's kind of another, sorry, that's kind of another experiment that I've got going on because I've never grown them before. We've got the celery here. And that's doing, doing quite well. Very well, in fact, very pleased with that. Tomatillos. These guys are just so forgiving. They're a little bit behind because, so if you can see, we've got the tiny little papery husks coming. Um, they're behind compared to the indoor ones, but that's obviously expected. So these are my backups. So yeah, celery, swede, and then down here, so this is the project I was just showing you. Down here we've got all um, summer squash and winter squash. Now the idea is that because this area is just so weedy that I'll pop these in just to help me suppress some of the weeds before I, I got the chance to do anything with them and they're doing a reasonable job. Now once these come out we'll be literally covering all of this in um, this cardboard and muck and in the ground membrane so what the cardboard is here anytime i get um spare cardboard i'm literally putting it down wherever we've got the weeds i've got a bit of a pathway going on here of cardboard and on top of it is literally fresh horse muck straight out out of the field horses are actually over in the corner at the moment um but yeah it's coming straight out of the field when we're tidying the field up and going onto the cardboard nothing will be getting planted in this um in here this year this is purely to keep the weeds down, act as a mulch um, and just give me a bit of a fighting chance. So I'm just doing it in straight paths. So I'm starting the next one. 
going all the way along. Now, the only thing is I need to be careful, this uh, squash here is starting to cut trail across it. Now, if that roots, see the mushroom? If that roots, um, it might burn and kill the plant because it's obviously uh, fresh and hot, so we don't want that. But again, learn, learning all the time. So this is just a couple of barrelfuls, quite high, just, just to stop these blooming nettles. I mean, look at them, they're so persistent. Anyway, we've got a couple of spaghetti squash, another spaghetti squash there. I actually knocked one off by mistake and I've taken it in the house, so I hope it comes on. A little uchi curry. And then weeds, weeds, weeds. Now the idea is we will bring more ground membrane over these weeds. Grace helped me put this down, so a little bit at a time. Now this is my compost heap that I've got here and I'm recreating the same here which is why I haven't got ground membrane over that bit because I'm not worried about the, the uh, weeds coming through once we've got lots of organic matter on it's going to be just far too much for it for the weeds to come through so I'm building this one up first I need some green leaves and things like that on there see if Stephen's got any grass clippings as well and then we'll move over and get started on this one but in the meantime look at this here the pigs used to be in here and we fed them tomatoes and this is self-seeded and there's quite a few I mean is that just typical is that just typical that you know you try your hardest with all of your own seeds and things and then self-seeded nature never fails oh there's another squash another pumpkin here or winter squash so these aren't doing too badly there's nowhere near as many as we would need um or would use should i say there's, there's a couple more spaghetti squash and another pumpkin here and just over here now where i'm walking along now is just the outsides um where we put down pathways so this has been here the whole time for the whole growing season so hopefully everything under here should be completely nettle free but you're never going to be nettle free here because it's it's a paddock area and there's nettles in the paddock and they travel under the ground so I've come up to the tomatoes that we were looking at when we first came down here and I, I'm quietly, I think they're going to be okay down here. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do about the ones at the top. So once I get a definite answer, and to be honest, even if I don't get a definite answer, I probably need to get rid of them anyway because there's something, they're not going to thrive now that they've got that other. So. I wanted to share it with you, learn from what's going on for me. I know there's another lady, um, she's got a channel called Perfect Days UK, who is not far from me actually, um, and she's got blight in her polytunnel. So I asked her last night, I dropped a message across and just, oops, I just asked her and she said, yep, yeah, blight in the polytunnel has been a funny old year. So I don't know, let me know in the comments, has it been a funny year for you for tomatoes? I guess you can't have everything right every year, can you? So what I'm gonna do now, is get on with these getting the big weeds out of these potatoes that i mentioned and i've also got underneath this netting if you remember when we did this together um obviously i haven't been under the netting because it's there for a reason to keep the butterflies out and everything is looking fantastic in there but the weeds are also looking fantastic because obviously i haven't been able to get in to do the weeding so i think i'm just gonna gonna have to get down on my hands and knees start pulling some weeds out it's a shame there's no kids around to help anyway this is a short clip today. As I say, it was more just having catch up with you, let you know what's going on. Um, middle of August, so really we're coming towards the end of summer. Not a depressing thing, need to move away from that. And I just wanted to share with you how we're doing, that there's problems, um, some things are looking fantastic. The peppers, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be harvesting those later on today, so I'll show you that in next week's vlog. But the peppers are looking fantastic. I think I've showed you them already, harvesting them once. Well, it's ready for, for round two. So I'm really pleased about that. So for the peppers, all I'll do is just literally take them off the plant. Um, for the ones that I want to freeze, I'll just chop them up and just shove them straight in the freezer. We'll actually backpack ours um, just, just to preserve them for a little bit longer. But no special treatment or anything, just straight into the freezer. I want to get some dehydrated too. Um, and any of the hot peppers or chilies, I guess you would call them. I've got my Tabasco plant, which uh, I didn't know which one it might be, but there's an upright nature of the growth of the, of the chili. So um, that gave that away. So I'm really pleased about that. because I'm going to be making hot sauce from those guys. But yeah, I think if we can get away with these potatoes, I'll be really pleased about that because we're going to go in the new cold room and uh, see if we can last the winter with some of them. I dread to think what this ground's going to look like once we get those up. 
but again it'll just get covered with more horse milk, cardboard, ground membrane and we'll just keep building this up so that next year it's going to be Right, best get to it instead of waffling, waffling on. So yeah, a quick clip, a bit of a catch up. Thank you for watching and we'll be back again next week with probably an extended version, the opposite of this week. So as I say, Stephen's back to work. I've got more time out here to get things done. Um, so a bit more of an extended version next week. Um, for now, that's it from me. So thank you for stopping by. Sorry to give you the bad news of the tomatoes. Well, potential bad news. We'll decide together, hey? And I'll talk to you next week. See you later, guys.